Okay, awesome. Um, so uh, we basically today are going to talk, I'll, I'll do a brief overview. I know most folks that are here um, know about the project in general, but I'll just go through another brief overview about what we're doing. Um, I work with Disart, um, my uh, fellow colleagues, Jill Vin and Lawrence Carter Long are actually traveling from Boston back home. Um, they were doing a um, beautiful presentation or actually not a presentation, excuse me, but they were there just like taking in a lot of information um, and, you know, just trying to help build up the work that Disart is doing. Uh, so I'm here by my lonesome, just managing all of the tech stuff. So sometimes I will fail today with this town hall, but thank you so much for your grace. <laughs> um, but today we'll be doing just a general overview, talking about the project. Um, I'll share a few slides. And then we have two amazing artists on the call with us, Jeff Casper and Jerron Herman, who are going to talk about their, um, what they will be contributing to the site. Uh, so they both will be in town um, for the last weekend of Art Prize um, from September 28th through the 30th. Um, and they'll both be doing amazing works. And so I'm just excited for you all to hear from them um, and just see how you can actually be a part of what they are doing um, and join in on that. So I will get started by sharing my screen. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, drop them in the chat. Um, as I move through, I may not be able to get to them in real time, but I will be sure to answer any questions at the end um, and also leave it open for anyone who would want to uh, talk about anything. Um, and we should be done about one o'clock, so it'll be like an hour in total for, for the time that we're here together. Okay, let me share my screen one second. Okay, beautiful. Um, hope everyone can see that. So um, the Art of Disruption is a project uh, that Disart has um, basically started working on and dreaming about in 2020. Uh, we are currently working right now with, um, I think we're at 28 artists. Um, so it's really exciting and they're across the US um, and artists that are working across mediums and different disciplines um, and really thinking about uh, with this work, what is this act of disrupting um, a space? What is disruption period? Um, and also how can uh, disruption of many things lead us to really consider how we kind of gain access? Um, and so we've been thinking about this work um, primarily thinking about these kind of thread lines um, around access, but thread lines um, between two different communities, uh, the black community and the uh, disability community and thinking about these thread lines between race and disability. So we've had um, many kind of internal artist talks trying to build up themes around the work. Um, and it's been a really beautiful process uh, for us. The artists have been so generous in what they've given, obviously them being experts um, within their field and their practice um, and being able to kind of like think together, expand upon what we all know, but also within this community, um, just try to like build upon the things that we're learning and discussing actively in real time. Um, so it's been a beautiful process since 2020. Um, if you all know about uh, Disart, um, I'll just give a brief history, but uh, Disart is a, a nonprofit organization based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, have been doing so many beautiful things, uh, refer to ourselves as a cultural production company. Um, we not only produce exhibitions, but working with artists, um, really considering the ways in which um, disability has to be really spoken about and um, understood within the art scope. Um, so not only are we working with artists, but working with arts organizations, um, arts institutions, and also doing like consulting work to kind of get folks on track of um, how they uh, create more uh, accessible, um, things, uh, whether it's within like a physical exhibition or whether it's within an application process, et cetera. Um, so Disart is, um, has been doing a lot of work in Grand Rapids and with this project, um, not only are we doing the preview in Grand Rapids for Art Prize, but we are also uh, working to uh, do a full-fledged uh, exhibition in New York City in the fall of 2024. So it's really, really exciting time. Um, for this particular preview, uh, if 
uh, anyone on this call does not know, the co-founder of this art, Chris Smith, was a huge uh, and amazing uh, presence in Grand Rapids and beyond, um, and was a very dear and close friend of mine, um, and unfortunately passed at the beginning of this year. Um, after Chris's passing, we started having conversations about um, what it would look like to honor Chris. Um, and it was really important for us to think about doing this work primarily with the art of disruption in Grand Rapids as a way to um, just like show folks who knew Chris, who knew and loved Chris and, and also the work that he was doing and the work that DisArt as an organization was doing to see the work that um, you know, since 2020 and even before that, that Chris was working towards. Um, so it became really important for us to start to plan a preview of the art of disruption in Grand Rapids. We were really excited uh, to start to work with Art Prize. Um, before I even get into that, I just want to let you know that you're looking at two images right now, two black and white images. The black and white image on the left is a photograph of a group of people walking in a march. The people in the photograph have dark skin with dark short. Uh, dark hair. One person in the foreground of the photo is wearing dark colored sunglasses. They are holding up multiple posters that are white and bold, with white with bold black lettering reading, I am a man and union justice now. The second picture on the right is a black and white photograph of a group of people taken at a march. There are three people in the foreground in wheelchairs with one person walking with a dog next to them in the foreground of the photograph. They are holding up multiple posters that are white with bold black lettering reading, we shall overcome and access is a civil right. So when we started thinking about this work and um, what we can do in Grand Rapids, obviously Art Prize came to mind um, and we had the beautiful opportunity to start working with Art Prize. Um, Art Prize so graciously uh, uh, provided us with a, a grant in honor of Chris Smith um, titled the Chris Smith Le Legacy Grant. Um, and we also was uh, were awarded a featured public project grant as well from Art Prize. So I just want to thank Art Prize. I, I see Joe Lee on the call right now. Thank you so much for your support um, in all aspects with this project. Um, but as you see with these two images, um, the work that we started talking about was uh, primarily about these kind of historical movements, um, the civil rights movement and then the disability rights movement, and this kind of beautiful a uh, thread line that happened with this kind of visual aesthetic and rhetoric that we see in the images that were documenting it. We obviously wanted to talk about that, reference that, but also think about like what's happening right now in this present moment and who is, who's currently at the forefront of these movements. Um, you know, who are the artists, who are the thinkers, who are the writers, who are the folks that are um, kind of making work um, as an extension of experience, but also in that making of work, bringing people together um, to truly like better understand like what we're all kind of dealing with and grappling with. Um, so it became really important for us with the 28 artists that we're working with to bring them into the conversation and really start to consider how we can expand upon this idea of disruption, the idea of access, but also um, considering like what is ableism and how can we expand upon like that language um, and also think about this inclusion of racism and all of these other isms that kind of tie into how we understand and acknowledge what ableism has been and what it is currently. Um, so this work became really, really important, and it's really special that we get to do it um, in Grand Rapids during our prize. To give you a little bit of um, kind of information on where it will be, um, we'll be doing this at Heartside Park, um, and this slide shows an actual image of Heartside Park. Uh, it's a photograph of Heartside Park in the foreground with downtown Grand Rapids looming in the background. There is a lone basketball court in the foreground surrounded by a concrete walkway and open grass. Um, we will actually be planted right on that basketball court um, with a beautiful structure that was created by Paula Menta and Sight Lab. And so Paula Menta and Sight Lab, they will be um, kind of rebuilding the structure here on Heartside Park. And then the artists that we're working with, which are 10 of the 28 artists that we have on the roster for the Art of Disruption, will be activating the site. So activating it with materials, but also, um, as you'll hear from Jeff and Jaron, activating it with performance and workshop and thinking about like, how do we actually bring community into this space? Um, so it's not just an activation by the artists, but it's an activation by community for community. 
Um, so we're really excited to be in Heartside, really excited to be there during our prize. We will start installation of the structure um, around September 8th with a full insta install week. And then we will have some activities and events that will take place starting on September 15th. So it's a really exciting time. Um, and the structure. So the structure that will be present um, during the actual um, installation and exhibition is a structure that you see here. Uh, just to give you a description of it, it is a photograph of the side view of a wooden and metal stage. The stage has a wooden ramp to the right of it with two by four slats of wood behind the ramp that have red, white, and yellow and white signage. There are palm trees and a blue sky behind the structure and four individuals standing on the ramp with their backs facing the camera. Um, so this structure is a structure that Site Lab has used uh, during many activations in Grand Rapids and elsewhere. Um, one actually was in Miami that uh, Site Lab and DisArt worked together to do kind of these podcast interviews. Um, and this was actually kind of a beautiful moment because it was something where Chris was actually a part of the kind of um, interviewing and talking about um, you know, the work that DisArt is doing. So this feels like a full circle moment for DisArt being able to um, bring this structure back in a different way um, as a way to honor the work that happened on the structure previously, but also as a way to honor um, this kind of move forward for DisArt as an organization, the way we're honoring what has happened in the past, but also bringing in new voices, new folks to activate the space um, and really make it something that uh, really, really focuses on the ways in which we can bring together community. So just to give you an idea of who the artists are, we have 10 artists that um, we'll be working with for this exhibition. Again, this is 10 of 28, but an amazing group of artists. And I'm so excited um, that they are all a part of this work. So we have Alex Dolores Salerno, Bill Andrade, Ezra Benes, Jeff Casper, Jerron Herman, Jillian Crochet, Josiah Golson, Jerome Ellis, uh, Liza Sylvester and Christopher Robert Jones, uh, which they're working together as a collaborative duo. And then we have R.A. Walden, AKA Palm, that will be doing a beautiful um, piece on the ramp as well as um, uh, a screening. So really excited to have this, this artist um, list. And I will, after I'm done with this presentation of mine, I'll make sure I drop in the chat a link uh, for you all to kind of learn more about their practices, their works, um, and also learn more about the kind of schedule of events that we have. So just to give you also some additional information about some of the activations and events that will be taking place, I'll go through this briefly. We will be doing some virtual events. Um, we have lunch and learn scheduled uh, for Wednesday, September 20th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, as well as Wednesday, September 27th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, we have all of this information on the website that I will share with you all in the chat. There are also links where you can sign up um, to join these. This is actually just giving you kind of insight into the consultation work that DisArt does um, and kind of opening up like what is possible with working and partnering with DisArt. You know, obviously we focus a lot on art and kind of producing exhibitions, but a big part of the work is also doing the kind of behind the scenes work and talking about, you know, kind of the things that people maybe don't want to talk about because they don't know how to. Um, and so we're trying to kind of remove that shame and really have these, um, these like kind of private conversations and also open public conversations where we're discussing things around DEI work, we're discussing things around access within branding um, and just all of these things that may come up but may not necessarily have a resolve. So how do we speak about them internally? So I hope if anyone is available for these days, please join us. Um, again, I'll, I'll drop in the chat a link to our website that has all the information for you to sign up for these. We'll also be doing two artist panels. Um, those artist panels will take place on Thursday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then Thursday, September 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, one of them will be about material, and then the other will be about process. Um, so thinking about the you know, material essence as an extension of the body, and then also process, um, kind of being in this mode of process. We, we use this term continuous becoming, because we don't want to necessarily like resolve 
solve or define anything, but think about process as a way for us to actively exist and be. Um, so really excited for these, these talks. It will be very informal, but I think it'll be really nice for you all to hear from um, some of the artists as they talk about their works and their, their practice and also their process um, and how they come into uh, some of these themes. And then we'll have some community activations. So we will be hosting community lunches in Heartside Park. Uh, one will be on Friday, September 22nd. Um, the time will still be determined. And then another will be on September, Friday, September 29th. I hope you all can make it. The obviously food will be free. Um, and we just wanna bring people together to be in dialogue, to be eating, um, and to also be experiencing the work that will be present um, on, on site. We'll also be doing some community partner activations. We have two uh, currently scheduled for that Friday, September 22nd and Friday, September 29th. But we're also talking to community partners right now and kind of opening that schedule up. So there may be some that take place um, in multiple days throughout our prize. Um, so we will keep that schedule updated on that site that I'll share in the chat. Um, and we're also asking people, if you can, if you want to, to sign up for our newsletter, we'll be sending out and sharing information as we get closer to date. Um, so you all are well aware of what's going on in our world. And we hope that you all can make it out to everything that will be taking place um, on the site. And then we have the in-person artist activation. So the last town hall, um, if you were here, you got to meet Josiah Golson. He talked a little bit about the workshop that he'll be doing, Republic Record. He will be in town that second weekend of our prize from the 21st through the 24th. And his actual um, activation, his workshop will be held on that Saturday, September 23rd. Um, we believe we have a a time for that, which is 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, that information will be at the website, um, but I will make sure we also share the recording and also information from Josiah in the kind of bulk email we send out to everyone about the town hall. So you all have information about this and hopefully you can come out on the 23rd. And then Jeff, I know I won't talk too much about what Jeff is doing because Jeff is here and can and talk, talk about this. Um, but Jeff will be in town and we'll be, do, be doing an activation on that Friday, September 29th. Um, really excited to have Jeff part of this and also to have Jeff um, actually actively bringing this really beautiful workshop to community. Um, and Jeff will talk about that in a quick second. And then Jaron, who is here as well, will be doing a beautiful uh, performance called Razor Fist Remix. Um, I'll let Jaron talk about this, but that will be happening on that Saturday, which is kind of like the finale of all of the activations and um, things that we'll be having on the site. Um, so also really excited to have Jaron a part of this and I will make sure I give the floor to Jaron to talk about that a little bit later. So that's all I have for you all right now. I'm gonna do stop share. I um, want to thank you all again for being here. I'm just going to quickly check the chat to make sure I didn't miss any questions. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff right now uh, to talk through the workshop that he will be bringing that last weekend of Art Prize. And again, just want to thank you all. I'll be putting in the chat a link to our website that has all of the information available for you all to, to find out more about all the things that we'll be doing. And Jeff, let me know if you do not have share access. I think you should. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff. I uh, just wanted to do a quick visual description of myself. I'm uh, a light-skinned Black man with a uh, buzz cut right now. My hair is pretty short um, and a Black shirt. I have like a tightly shaven uh, brown beard and usually a smile. And yeah, I always wear Black. John knows this. For the most part, I that's my that's my uniform. In the back, you can see some plants and a window, and also a painting that I think a family member painted, but we can't like figure out who to attribute it to. Um, but it's of a like carnival scene. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and talk a little bit about uh, the workshop that I'm excited to lead. <clears throat> and once I figure out how to do it. <laughs> I can share, but I'm I'm just it's just taking me a little moment. <laughs> there we are. All right, I think I'm gonna share it in this way so I can see my notes as well. So 
uh, apologies for some extra uh, stuff on the side. <laughs> um, so I am Jeff Casper. Um, you can sort of see an image here on my screen that has just a logo um, on a white background. It's a large black text and it says J Casper. Um, I'm an artist, uh, writer, and an educator. Uh, and I have a background in uh, design, contemplative arts, and social engagement. And my work has a lot to do with themes of social support, relationship building, dialogue, and I create objects, games, workshops, social spaces, um, all sorts of sort of uh, kind of engaging things. Um, uh, let's see if I can actually get the image a little bit larger for y'all. Cool. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to bring um, a workshop uh, to Grand Rapids called uh, it goes by different names. The project's called Dreaming Support and the workshop's gonna be called uh, Designing Safe Spaces. Um, and it's a series of workshops um, that has like custom play tools, um, card games, worksheets, lots of cool art supplies um, and involves writing and sort of reflection as well as like hands-on tactile design activities. Um, I'm gonna show some images of what it looks like and uh, I'm gonna describe them a bit. Um, so uh, essentially the workshop is around creating like kind of a cozy and uh, safe or supportive space that you could ever dream of. It has, uh, it could have anything that you want it to have in it. We'll have so many different materials and to help us sort of get going, we um, I'll be providing these kind of like colorful game cards. Um, and on the screen here, you can see two cards and the, I'm gonna read off these sort of prompts on them. One of them says, imagine a place you feel happy or relaxed. And what does that space look or feel like? Uh, that was a pink card and a, a blue card says, how do you take care of yourself or others when feeling overwhelmed? Um, and this, these cards offer like prompts to do different activities with worksheets and um, kind of interactive art materials. On the screen, you could see like a bunch of images, around eight images of folks uh, collaging and creating their own spaces. You, uh, families come to the workshop as well as individuals. It's really kind of made for anyone of all ages. Um, my favorite part is that there's a lot of stickers involved, um, which I, I think are the coolest things ever. And um, part of this uh, workshop will actually be a custom workshop, a workbook that everyone can take home for free that has um, also like a custom new limited edition sticker pack. So if anybody likes cool like art merch like I do, um, definitely stop by uh, the workshop because you'll uh, be able to take home and work with your friends and family too. Um, though the workshop is pretty simple and you can drop in and out. Um, uh, there'll be lots of arts materials. And as on the screen, you can see um, two different worksheets. One is of like a blank room, like a corner um, where the room is drawn from different lines that are sort of going into a perspective. Um, and on top it says, what would a supportive space feel like? On the other uh, page are lots of different stickers um, that you can begin to color in and as well as bring into the space. Um, I like to uh, have opportunities for folks to kind of just have a mindful moment about, um, you know, where they where they find strength in their lives. And maybe sometimes that and this is the case for me, sometimes I imagine like a space that's just like really relaxing, especially when I'm like really stressed out and I need a moment to kind of like ca catch up with myself. Um, one of the things I do is like focus on like, what if I had like a really cool space right now? What if I was in a comfy space? What would that feel like? Um, so this is where this workshop um, comes from. Uh, and I'm excited to, to share it with you all. Um, I think that's all I got, <laughs> but I'm happy to to talk a little bit more about it if folks have questions. Um, I recently led this workshop in Cleveland, uh, a number, a series of workshops of this nature in Cleveland, and it was really fun opportunity uh, for families also to come together, uh, as well as like friends who kind of happen upon the workshop. Um, what I like for my workshops to do is offer a space where you can kind of have conversations that you wouldn't normally have with yourself and with others. Um, so 
Um, I really recommend folks to, uh, if you're thinking about coming to or stopping by to the workshop, um, that you bring someone you care about um, who you never really had these kind of conversations with around like, like what does support feel like or like what's my dream cozy space. Um, and the last thing I'll say is um, some of the inspiration for this is, uh, for this workshop comes from my like obsession with video games that where you can build your own space and like make a cozy world or a farm. Um, and I'm really uh, interested in like how that was something uh, for me growing up and still to today that I kind of lean on as my, a resource where I'm like, oh, I, I had like a really rough day or, you know, I maybe I'm at home in bed and like creating a space for myself in this world really uh, helps me kind of calm down. Um, so I wanted to create ways that folks could do that where we don't have to always be on screens. Um, so I, I hope you you all uh, stop, uh, stop by. Um, and yeah, that's all for me right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. That was great. Yeah, we uh, really hope that uh, you all can make it out to, to Jeff's workshop. I know it's gonna be really beautiful. Um, I'll give some space for questions if anyone has any, um, but if not, I'll give it to Jerron. This is Jerron speaking. Actually, Jeff, are you using, how are you gonna use the structure? I guess I'm curious. Yeah, so um, we're hoping to have uh, the workshop like sort of on the structure, like in the space as well as sort of around it. And there'll be lots of work stations for folks to kind of sit and relax. Um, so there will be work tables with materials as well as um, for folks who kind of are interested but want maybe don't have a lot of time, they can take workbook home. So there'll be uh, kind of like, it, it'll be sort of a workshop and distribution site <laughs> in some sense. Um, but we just got all the materials and they're really cool. I, as I said, I love stickers. So I've got like really shiny ones and soft ones and, and all different kinds of things. So uh, it's just going to be fun. So I know you're in town, so you better, you better hang out and make space. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm so there. I want, I'm going to hoard the stickers um, just so you know. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll leave them for community members. <laughs> Um, okay, well, with that, I am so excited. Um, I will also share my screen. Um, my name is Ron Herman, and uh, I'm also an artist. And uh, my work primarily looks at, is this doing the right one? Can you see? Oh, yes. Okay, cool. So let me just like widen this as well. Um, yeah, so on the screen is um, a white, uh, <laughs> a white uh, presentation with my name, John Herman, against um, neon green background with a line through it. And the text is saying, Raise a Fist Remix for the Art of Disruption preview at Art Prize. And like I said, I'm an artist, um, primarily working in dance, um, but I'm also a writer um, by like, you know, <laughs> by school and training, and then also just interest. Um, and then I've been really thinking about how those two disciplines uh, connect. Oh, I also should uh, self-describe myself. I'm a dark-skinned Black man with a bushy beard today and cropped uh, blonde hair. And I'm wearing, a, I'm also wearing a Black t-shirt, go, you know, the, the artist uniform. And behind me is, uh, a, a, you know, white, uh, is white. <laughs> The white room um and really shout out to, to leandra and all the folks at this art because i'm like so grateful the kind of community that we've been engendering over this past year alone is just like so enlivening and um for this preview it's just like it's going to be such a beautiful landing for all the things that we've been dreaming about and as a first dreaming and to support and to think about chris's legacy it's just going to be so amazing um, i'm so excited so Raise a Fist Remix thinks through, um, yeah, this conversation with, yes, disability and Blackness, um, the relationship to protest culture and our understanding of protest um, as a form of, uh, of language and of, of communication. Um, there's, I think that, you know, with the, our present current situations of global and, and, and national interest, 
uh, the word protest for me has gotten a little watered down actually. And so there's a, there's a way that I, I want to absor observe the, uh, the critical and or um, foundational aspects of protest that maybe have thinned out over time. Um, and to think about what are the, maybe what are the, uh, the foundational elements that we can draw from for today's uh, society and culture. Um, just to give a little bit of what where my thinking is, the next slide has text that says, I'm drawn to storytelling that narrates abundance and my artistry intends to present works that embrace full extension of the body and spirit. And I think that's really why I'm doing any of this um, is to allow um, community members, audiences to uh, come to a full knowing of themselves and extend. Um, that's really important to me. My practice really kind of evolved and and, and uh, exploded in 2019. Um, and on the on the on the slide is a 2019 <laughs> um, artistically drawn. Uh, and then the out of the next slide has these excerpts of pieces, uh, which I won't get to for time, but they include uh, three pieces that really, uh, dotted this year for me. One was called Relative, which was a um, club uh, treatise love letter to the disability community, um, where I, which, which I did at uh, Performance Space New York as a part of another disabled-led festival. Uh, I want to be with you everywhere. Um, Breaking and Entering was a duet uh, that I co-conceived and directed with uh, disabled musician Molly Joyce, and then Many Ways to Raise a Fist, uh, which I will talk about later. Um, so the next slide has Many Ways to Raise a Fist from two love, oh, I'm sorry, did I say 2000? Yeah, 2019. Um, it was at the Whitney Museum of Art, um, and it was a quasi lecture to depict the serpentine nature of protest culture and reveal a context of embodied protest and um, I really want to answer the curiosity, my curiosity with the word and develop a shared experience with it and probably some aspirational um, aspirational idea and ideas and um, I don't know, uh, I guess idea idea making around the around the word protest. Um, my ambition is to like make this into a full length theatrical piece. The first iteration was um, 26 minutes, so nah. But this one, I hope to make into a full length piece around 2026, let's say. And it wants to be this uh, this theatrical work that centers on a, a named protagonist that creates one great lecture, speech, treatise on truth and justice uh, before he's to be tried for crimes. Uh, some of my influences are Aeschylus's Oresteia, uh, which is literally like a old school crime, like law drama um, from from antiquity. Uh, Paul Robeson and Imp the Emperor Jones um, is another touch tone for me for this work. Um, Castaway <laughs> and The Matrix <laughs> as films that are really intriguing to me for that, and then the Apostle Stephen before he was stoned um, <laughs> in the Bible and the Old Test in the New Testament. Um, the aesthetics for that this piece would be bare, chrome, onyx blacked out, sand, wind, arrest. And oh, this was really intriguing to me as like the mosh pit before the concert. Like, you know, that there's a container for energy, but it's, you know, what happens before the energy is exploded. For my purposes with uh, disart and um, the art of disruption, I really want to think about many ways to raise a fist remix which would be an activation to support the creation of a great speech and to think about shared authorship of language and of um, and invite audience members and community members to uh, put their stamp onto what is, um, what is said. So I've kind of devised a, a script writing, if you will, um, activation and and activity that would allow audiences and participants to like put their stamp um, on what I would eventually say, how I would move, and what the environmental um, elements would be. So audience will help craft a political protest treatise uh, withdrawn by voting, placing, and pointing to the words, phrases from other texts that I will provide, gestures, movements that ring true to those texts or the context that they wish to create, and then sounds and soundscapes that underscore the moment. 
and that Jaron should use. So again, kind of in vain, in the vein of Jess uh, activation, it's like an installation. I want kind of a choose your own adventure. Um, and I think it's really, and I've, as a solo artist, there's, um, I'm, I don't have a lot of moments where I can, uh, like where the audience can respond to me or gesture to me what should happen. And so I'm really excited about uh, the possibilities. Um, so the activity is really like participants will pick from buckets and bins <laughs> and paste and place elements together to be read, understood. And I'll I'll read and absorb uh, and adhere to the sequence and then also feel the spirit a little bit. And also is I've added a picture of Fred Hampton, um, uh, who was a, um, you know, seminal Black, Black Panther Party um, uh, leader. Um, and, um, who has a, you know, talk about someone who had a voice. Uh, and so with that, the similar, um, I'm hoping for the similar in invocation of, of someone like him to, to, um, to bless the space. Um, and I would use the structure, uh, as well. So we would use the ramp. Like I would, I would allow the audience and the members to, um, to think about, where things happen. And I also really want to get a bullhorn. Uh, so that's one um, <laughs> that's one uh, thing I need to pick up. Uh, and so just give you kind of an example of whimsical examples of what might happen, like an exquisite corpse, um, the kind of visual art um, activity that allows people to um, independently create a composite a image on the right and then on the, on the or on the left and on the right is um a <laughs> a uh what are they called again um a ransom note <laughs> but again <laughs> kind of the aspect of, of of uh chopping and screwing um one singular idea um and of course these ideas will evolve and and think through um as as we get closer but and i've ended the screen but um what i'm really excited about is this um provocation of authorship for community members um this play with uh with kind of our knowledges of what um uh, maybe protest means and 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 even uh to inspire kind of maybe even the mundanity of making a speech that would ring true and and create a frequency of um of speeches that would ring true or help move um people in in communities and so yeah that's what i'm hoping with this raise the fist remix thank you thank you jaron that's incredible um yeah i'm so excited for it like just going in and just thinking about like the play at work and um yeah just what will happen like in the moment like you said choose your own adventure so thank you so much um i'll leave the space open for a little bit for any questions anyone may have Hi everyone, uh, this is Jolie from Art Prize. Um, I don't really have many questions, but I just wanted to say hello and to say thank you for all of your efforts, labors, and energies to get to this point where we can watch a very exciting uh, presentation about what's gonna happen real soon. <laughs> um, just yes, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jolie, um, and thank you for being here. Uh, and yes, thank you, Erica. Erica wrote in the chat, thank you for sharing. It sounds like an exciting set of activities for our prize. Yes, we're very excited. Thank you so much. Um, well, that's all we have today. I just wanted to just continue to say thank you and offer my gratitude for you all joining us in this space, with these town halls, if you've been to one or all or two or even all three. Um, we just really appreciate you taking the time to just, you know, come and learn about the things that we are going to be doing during Art Prize and the things we're excited about. Um, and please, if you can, come visit. Um, we'll be at Heartside. Again, we'll be starting with the installation process on September 8th. So if you even want to come and see that, please do so. Um, I will be on site starting on the 10th of September. 
Um, so happy to meet with anyone if you would like to come to the site and just talk. Um, I'll be there. Um, installation can be stressful, but I always have a smile on my face. So I will, <laughs> I will greet you with a smile. We can talk. Maybe I'll give you a tool and you can help. Um, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, please come by um, the site during install, but even after when we start the activations. Um, and I, I will put in the chat once more the link to our website. Um, please follow along. We'll be updating the website as we go with um, all of the information, concrete information around times for all of the events. And please sign up for our newsletter if you can. That will also be a good way to hear from us via email. So thank you again and excited to see you all very soon. And thank you, Jeff and Jaron, for those beautiful presentations. Really, really grateful for you both and for your work and all that you do in the world. Awesome. Let us know if you need any help with those installations. I'm joined with um, Pharaoh Khalil, who is the exhibitions coordinator of Art Prize. So he, we will be walking through this with all of y'all. Very Thanks, y'all. <laughs> all right. Thanks, y'all. We'll have a good rest of the lunchtime, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Jaron. <laughs> Talk soon. Oh. <laughs>